Hey folks, I'm Sam here at NA Studios. Thanks so much for stopping by and checking the video out. I wanna take a look at buses in Logic Pro X. What are they, why are they useful, and how can you use them to really expand the potential of the sounds you're creating? So buses are essentially a way of sending audio somewhere. This could be somewhere within the door. If you check your track on the mixer where it says stereo out, you're actually already using buses. In this case, it's the main stereo bus. So you're sending your audio somewhere, sending it to the main stereo output. You can also send your audio somewhere else in the door before it hits that main stereo output. Think of the main stereo output as the final destination. It's what goes to your speakers or your headphones. But along the way, you can send that audio somewhere else before it reaches its final destination. So just like a regular bus that you sit on and take you somewhere, an audio bus within Logic can make a few different stops along the way before it reaches that final destination. You can also send it to hardware outputs on your interface, bring it out through some outboard gear. We'll touch upon that, but I mainly want to take a look at sending audio to different places within Logic and why it's a useful thing to be able to do. So let's check it out. So I've got a piece of audio here, let's just press play. Just a standard Apple loop. I'm going to bring up my mixer. And here we can see our outputs that I mentioned a moment ago. It's going to the main stereo output. So that's essentially a bus in itself. We can just tell the audio to go there. But we can also create other buses within Logic. So it's the difference between an output bus and a send bus. The output is really the destination and the send is somewhere it goes along the way. So let's go to sends and let's go to bus and let's create something on just bus 16. And this is going to create a new channel in the mixer for us. Okay, so this send bus is going to bus 16. This is just a destination, not the final destination, but just somewhere it can go along the way. And then this channel that we've just created has the input of bus 16. So we can send this first channel, this acoustic guitar, to this other channel before it then reaches the final destination of the stereo output. You can see that the output of this is stereo out as well. So we can change the amount that this audio is going to this second bus by the send amount. Over here, if we bring up this dial, then we can send a certain amount of it to this channel. Let's just see if it's down at zero, then we'll see absolutely no signal on this meter whatsoever. But as I start to bring it up, as I bring it up to unity, up to zero, at that point at unity, it's going to be exactly the same amount as is on the original channel. Let's just take a look at that so we can kind of see it in action. So nothing at the moment. As I bring it up, and then at Unity, it's the same amount, minus 7.6. So why is this useful to be able to do this? Well, it's the difference between series and parallel. If we think about something in series, so one after the other, the first point of a chain affects the second point, which affects the third. Everything is cumulative. Everything that you do just affects the next point in the chain. When we're doing something in parallel, then we can have two things that are separate from each other, but both reach that same final destination, that stereo output. So if we put a plug-in on an insert on a channel, this is essentially series. If you put two inserts on a channel, two plugins, then whatever comes out of the first one will go into the second one. We're aware of that. But if you have something on a send effect, so a bus send, this is in parallel. So this is now separate from the original dry track. Let's put this into practice and see exactly how it changes things. So I'm just gonna put this in stereo for a moment, just because that's gonna become useful in a moment. Uh, let's just put a delay on it, doesn't matter what kind of delay it is, but I'm gonna go for the mix 100%. If we've just got something on an insert, then having it at 100% mix, the wet mix, then it means that we're just gonna hear the sound of the plugin. We're not gonna hear any of the original dry sound. Because we've got it going to a bus, it means that we've got just that wet signal, just that affected signal, so we want that mix to be 100%. So that fader now, the second fader that we just created, is now essentially just the effects fader. It's just the sound of the delay. And we can hear that. If we just start to bring up this fader, we'll hear the sound of the delay come up. It will start not on at all, and then as we bring it up, we'll start to hear some of that delayed sound. And we can set that to whatever amount we want. We can just bring it in really subtly or we can send a large amount of it there. 
So this fader now has become a volume control for that effect, whatever the effect is, be it reverb, delay, distortion. We've now got a separate control for that. So why is it useful? Well, let's say we've got two tracks in here. We've got a guitar and a vocal. If we want to put that delay or reverb or distortion, whatever it is, on both of those channels, if we do it in the series way, the normal kind of inserts way, then we've got to put two reverb plugins on, one on each channel, or two delay plugins, whatever it is, and we've then got a bit more to think about. We've got to control the amount of the original dry signal, the amount of the reverberated signal. We've got two plugins there, so if we've then maybe got a load of channels that we want to do it to, we've got a load of reverb plugins, which is going to make our computer fall over, which is not going to be great for it. So it makes things a bit easier when we're using these effects. We can send a number of channels to this effect and just bring up the overall level of that one wet sound. And we can bring up the overall sound of reverb across the entire track, something that we can't do if we just put it as an insert. So that's kind of a general overview of buses. We can have the main stereo out. That is essentially a bus in itself. It's the final destination. And we can have effect sends along the way, which are just stops that the bus will, will stop off at before reaching that final destination. But we can do things in a slightly different way, depending on how we want the signal to go to that bus. If we go to our bus send, then we've got a few different ways of sending it. We've got post pan, post fader, pre-fader and then independent pan. Now independent pan is a very interesting one which we're going to come on to in a moment but let's just get a grounding of these these first three first of all. So the standard is post pan. So this is after the pan has taken effect on the channel and it's also after the fader has taken effect on the channel. That post or pre-fader we're going to come on to a bit more in a moment but just for the for the sake of being complete here let's just bring down the fader and hear what happens to the signal going into the delay. So we're just left with the actual wet signal, the delayed signal. So this post pan is after the fader has happened. Anything that's happening on the fader is also affecting what's going on on the bus. So if you turn the fader up, then it turns up the amount of signal going into the bus. If you bring it down, it turns it down. But it's post pan as well, and this is the interesting one. So if I then pan this signal to the left, where I've just got the half note delay, then the signal's not actually gonna go to the right hand side, so that 16th note delay. So if we're just going to the left hand side, the pan is just going to the left, then we're only gonna get that half note delay. Let's just hear that now. So I'll bring this up to Unity again, and let's do that as we're playing it. So initially we're gonna hear the half and the 16th. As I pan around to the left, we're just gonna hear the half note delay. And then round to the right. We just get that 16th note delay. So post pan means that the pan of the original channel, the dry channel, is going to affect the send signal as well. So if we pan something to the left, it's only gonna go into the left-hand side of that bus. And whatever's happening on the left-hand side of that effect send is going to be imparted upon the signal, but nothing in the right, and then vice versa as well. So the other two then, we've got post fader here, but this is not post pan. This is in between the fader and the pan. So any kind of panning that we do here is not gonna have any effect on the amount of signal. So again, if I just pan it, just keep it over to the right, it's actually still gonna go into the left-hand side of the plugin as well. So we're gonna hear that half note delay in the left-hand side. Just take a listen. So although we've only got the actual fader, the original dry signal panned over to the right hand side, the bus is still going to the left and right of that bus. It's a stereo bus and it's kind of disregarding what's happening on the pan. The fader, however, is going to make a difference because it's disregarding the pan, but it's not disregarding the fader. So if I bring that fader down, the amount of signal going into that bus is also going to come down. then pre-fader is going to disregard what's happening with the fader. So if I bring down that fader whilst it's going into the bus, then the fader is going to make no difference. It's just still going to go to that send exactly the same amount. So 
so we're still left with the same amount of audio going to the send, but the original channel comes down. So we've got three different ways of sending there. We've got post pan, which is after the fader and after the pan. We've got post fader, which is after the fader, but before the pan. So the pan is gonna make no difference whatsoever. And then we've got pre fader, which is before the fader and before the pan. So anything we do fader wise is gonna make absolutely no difference to that send amount going into the bus. So an interesting one here though is independent pan. And there's a few different ways that you might use this, but there's one really useful way that you could use this. Let's see how we can actually engage this first of all. So let's go to this send here and let's go to independent pan. And you'll see that it turns yellow. At the moment, there's no difference. But what we need to do is turn on our sends on faders here. And you'll see that everything kind of changes a little bit. It goes a little bit yellow. So this is the amount going to this bus here. This is our delay bus. If I created another bus, let's go just here, then we could actually change the amount going to that bus as well. And it mirrors the amount of send onto the faders. So the fader now no longer controls the amount of level going up into the stereo out of the original signal. It doesn't control the volume of the original signal. It controls the send, it mirrors the send. This is useful for a number of reasons, but what this does is it allows us to do this independent pan where we can just take that one signal and send it into either the left-hand side of the plugin or the right-hand side of the plugin. So that's the plugin that's on the bus. So we can do that on the normal channel. We can do that when we're going um, post fader as well. We can make it so it just goes into the left. But this is more of a, an individual way of doing it. This disregards everything else and it just means that you can send the amount of bus send just to one side of the plugin. So it would do the same thing as where we had the left-hand side doing the half note and the right-hand side doing the 16th note. But there's a few plugins that really utilize this in an interesting way. One that I can think of is Trigger 2 from Slate Digital. Um, so this has this leakage suppression where you can send a signal into the left-hand side of the plugin or the right-hand side of the plugin. Left-hand side of the plugin will fire some samples. Everything in the right-hand side of the plugin will enable that leakage suppression. So let's say you've got a microphone on a rack tom and you're getting a little bit of spill from the snare drum. Then you send the rack tom into the left-hand side of the plugin and it will trigger a rack tom sample. But if you feed the snare drum into the right-hand side of the plugin, then it will know, well, this has been told that it's leakage and that it's not what it wants to trigger. So every time it hears a signal from that, it will know that it doesn't want to fire a sample. So that's essentially everything you need to know about buses within Logic Pro X. You can send something to its final destination using the, the stereo output. You can send stuff to other destinations along the way, which then go to that final destination. And it's to do with this series and parallel idea. So you can send something in series, which every link in the chain will affect the previous one. Or you can send it to somewhere else in parallel first, and that's going to be a different signal chain, which then ends up at the same place. You can send buses into other buses, you can send them to completely different places within Logic. The possibilities are really endless within the program itself, but you can also send stuff to hardware outputs if you want to do like outboard gear or anything like that, or maybe you just want to go to a separate set of speakers which you've got plugged into a different output. Well, you can do that in a very similar way. So we could take this acoustic guitar, it's currently going to a stereo output, but we can go to outputs and then to mono, and then from there we can send it to a hardware output on our interface. I've got these all set up and named, you can send them out of whatever hardware output you want, and then create another track which will have an input from a hardware interface and allow you to bring the signal back in. So there may be occasions when you want to have an audio track on Logic and you want it to receive a bus. So it's not dealing with auxiliary channels, we're talking about an actual audio channel here that in that example of having uh, something recorded back in from outboard gear, you want the input to be a bus. And that's another way that you can use buses within Logic. If we create a new channel now and we just go and just set it up as normal, we can set the audio input to actually be a bus and not necessarily just an audio channel. So let's just go to number one. I know it says drums, let's just use it. And let's take this one out of ascend going to bus number one. And then the input of this is going to be drums. So if we were to set record on this, we could then press record and whatever's coming into that bus will actually record onto the channel. Let's take a look at that. So 
So it's not only sending things to another bus, to another channel where you can put effects on, you can also create channels within Logic that have buses as inputs and then record onto those channels within Logic. Now there's loads of different reasons why you may want to do this. I've done a video on how you can export stuff from Logic, which you can check out in the description below. There's loads of different ways that you can export from Logic, export buses, export individual channels. And one of these includes actually recording a load of tracks back into Logic onto a separate channel. Your reasons for doing this are going to vary from mine or from the next person's, but it's handy to know that if you need to do that, then you can, and then you can just export that one file out of Logic and you've got everything that was going to that particular bus. So that is really all you need to know about buses in Logic Pro X. It's super simple, but it's really effective. This idea of series versus parallel, series is going to be a bit more of a straightforward way of doing things, but parallel enables you to be so much more creative and create different channels that have just reverb on them or just delay, just distortion, whatever it is, and you can then blend them all together at the end at the stereo output. Hopefully this has been useful for you and I'll see you again soon on the channel. Take care.